I had this master material that I made for myself in order to apply it for any situation. Um, and I then created a vertex master material. So in one of my previous videos, I showed how to use a Quixel bridge in order to create this blend material. If you go to this blend material, double click the instance, go down here and find for the parent, which is a master material for this instance. That's located in our content browser. We can close this now and then open this. You will see that uh, you can find this uh, master material for vertex painting from Quixel Bridge and you can break it down and even use it for yourself. That's what I did actually. I just took the parts for my, for my uh, master material and I combined them the way to work in a similar way. And here it's a little bit complex uh, in a way that there's uh, notes inside the notes, you know, like an in inception. And if you go in, you can find one uh, part. And then if you go into the second bit, you have another one, you know. So you can take all of those and combine them accordingly. That's what I did. I took those bits and I applied it to my master material and created vertex material of my own. And let me, first of all, go to my materials and create an instance from this and apply this. So let me just open this and I will show you how it works. Uh, so there, like every layer has got settings. We also have blend controls between base, middle and top layer. I'll go through each one of them and then show how it works in the map here. So what I did, I took this whole master material and I just applied, copy pasted it into this new vertex material and I got rid of a lot of stuff. So I kept color, uh, roughness, metallic, specular, normals, ambient, inclusion, and displacement. And displacement I only kept for hate map and uh, just copy pasted three times. So because we're going to have three materials and we have to apply them, combine them together. So and also uh, each one of them has got their own attributes, uh, material attributes. And then we have one section for the uh, uh, one layer being blended with the second layer, then those two being blended with the third layer, and then we have puddle layer, and then we have the ending, which is the output. So we apply that, and we have this base layer, so we have to tell it, just like in the master material, we have to tell it that we're going to use ORDP texture instead of the separate textures, and then it will change it accordingly. So we have to select this texture, we need to select albedo and normal, let's apply this albedo here, apply this ORDP and normals and then also I will make it a little less specular and more rough let's make it uh, 0 let's make roughness 1 for now, I know, for this purpose so for the middle layer, the same uh, each layer has got the same settings uh, as the previous one so we need to tell it it's ORDP uh, we have to select those textures that we want to change. We, for the second layer, we're going to use grass. And we don't see it because I haven't painted it yet, so it will appear later. Also, just beforehand, let's uh, loose, loosen the specular amount and raise the roughness. And then the top layer, also RDP, albedo, and normal. And we'll use this uh, rustic paint. Here we go. Also remove the specular amount and make it rougher. Let me paint. So we'll go to mesh paint. Select paint. So by default it will be like this. So increase strength and choose red channel. And let me paint it for now. Here we have this grass. And actually let me make this grass a little more brighter just for now so we have this grass and we can control uh, the edges and height map and so forth so uh, if we go here up here there will be blend controls and there's blend middle layer sorry base middle layer blend control so if we apply this we can blend the amount as you can see bend the contrast and fall off of the edges so it, what it does, it uses the height map from ORDP 
and it applies it just like from Quicksilver. And then we can pay you. Know, and what happens here uh, behind the scenes is this is the first place where uh, the blending happens between mid layer and the base layer. So we take one layer and the second layer and we combine them here and we blend them. We use alpha from here, but before that we have the settings. That's the settings, the blending of the heat map. And that heat map is taken from one material and from the second material. And they are combined in LERP. Now then it goes to this section, which is a heat LERP. Basically it uses the vertex color to tell the system that when we're going to choose the red color, we're going to paint this blending after the settings applied. And um, we'll use it as alpha here and later as well. So in short, that is the blending of two layers, and we have options here. So all of these base, la base layers options that we have under here is actually that comes before. Before, so we have base layer settings here, median, uh, middle, and top. And then anything that happens in here, it is in the blend control. So we choose between those two. So now let's go and paint uh, the second layer, which is set into the green channel. So we'll go here. We paint this paint, the rustic paint. And we have also the same settings, right? So if we go top, we have top layer blend controls. If we go, if we go here and blend them, we have the same, same thing applied, right? On top. So we have three layers. So if we go and check the map, so red is here and green is the next one. So what happened here? For vertex paint, which we apply to green channel, so whenever we choose green channel, we're going to paint this. We use this in vertex uh, height alert section. Then the same as before, the same settings really, and we have the same options. We use uh, both height maps, and we use uh, blend uh, the previous final result of both of them with the top layer uh, original. And well, what is different? is that uh, in the Quixel bridge, a master material for vertex painting, here we had, instead of displacement, uh, it used a world displacement, and that is from the previous uh, Unreal Engine version, if I'm not mistaken. And it's not even here, world displacement is not here. And displacement even also is not here uh, in the final uh, attribute, when you don't create it uh, as a new node. It's not here. Displacement in the Unreal Engine 5.3, at least, it has to be manually enabled. So here, what I had to do, because displacement doesn't work well in this version, I had to um, take this height maps manually. So I take height map from mid material and base material from here, and I lerp them, and I use alpha from previous vertex paint. From here, same alpha we used for the blending, and then I applied on top. I believe I applied it well, as it works for me, as you have seen. So it is actually very similar as before, and that's why it works similar. And then the next section we'll talk about is puddle. So let me just first of all show you how it works. Actually, the same. Actually, all of these settings are the same as Quixel. It's just that I applied it to my master material, and I have more options. For the material so I can change the hue, saturation, brightness, roughness, metallic and so forth. So in order to paint it we use final channel blue. So if we and we painted it and it's not much we can see and the actually the problem is that we turned off all the roughness and specular. So we need to it takes this roughness information from the master materials when we blend them and then it applies on top and the additional settings and then it outputs it. So uh, because there's nothing to take, it doesn't see it, and it cannot blend it with the puddle roughness. So what I have to do now is to bring some specular back. Okay, so now when I brought it to the minimum, now we can see that water becomes specular, more specular and less rough. So now we have controls here. We have the main thing I would start with probably is uh, with the wave controls. We can scale the wave, but to see it better, we need to create the uh, normal strength. And that's the texture it uh, uses by default. You can change it if you like. Um, so we have this normal 
strength and let's make it uh, increase speed for it to move faster right here we go and uh, let's create a bigger wave or maybe a small wave but that's the settings that you have for the liquid here so we have that we also have additional controls for roughness uh, which is applied on top right so let's make it less rough to have some reflection and uh, the next thing I would use probably you can you can show the color so we can change the color let's make it cyan and uh, what else opacity more transparent less transparent more thicker or less thick the next interesting thing is height max so it uses the height map like we used before between those the um, different textures in order for it to sink in or not so we do have the same thing for water so if I go and reduce the height it will sink in and it will be applied according to the height map it is below but it is not above uh, on the on the surface so use the height map accordingly so let me just remove some water remove the top layer delete everything and I want some grass actually some grass and remove these settings just to keep the grass here so now the water is seen better so what I want to show is uh, let me first talk about the color of the fall off so we have the color of these dark areas like the wet areas the water doesn't touch but it probably it was there where it is about to touch the surface so let me change the color just to see it better let's make it purple range of fall off you see how far it goes and how dark it is and then we have we can adjust its roughness too so it's wet or not and better to use a similar color and then if we adjust this uh, height map it will be lower or higher we'll let me lower down the speed just to make it more natural and here we are so we have all the settings here applied so now let's check what is happening behind the scenes for the puddle so this one is a little bit more complicated and what it does basically it takes the material uh, the final material that is blended from three of the layers and it breaks it down again into subsections here and again there was an issue uh, we don't have displacement it used world displacement displacement doesn't work so I had to use alert and combine the previous height map with the final height map and I used that alpha of the final uh, combination of both layers before it and I applied them later on for the puddle so that's the change that I had to make in order for it to work and uh, so just in short if I run through this we have this color so as you have seen we have the color of the liquid it uses the alpha uh, of opacity that is blended with the height map and uh, uh, it takes this height map from before that I just combined in lurk we also have this albedo darken color so this is the edge where the uh, water touches the surface uh, color it also uses the same alpha not the same but a little dark make mask alpha also goes through all of these settings and uses uh, that uh, lurk of the height map to apply it accordingly so then we have the height map so we have uh, the, the liquid height map which we used for it to sink or go up and before that I didn't mention we have albedo darkening range and darkening fall off so that's the where the, the water touches the surface how far it goes and how dark it is and then it is applied to our uh, darkening color then we have normals uh, that's the waves we just have this uh, controls of the liquid which is a uh, wave scale speed and strength and uh, it goes through this thing and then we blend everything so we take uh, the final version of all of the settings that we applied like before for every layer for anything that we blended so we take these bits and we blend them with the uh, new application of the water on top and afterwards we put them back together so we kind of break them down and put them together with a uh, puddle on top so we take for example the normal map we blend it with the 
uh, with, the, with the original because we apply this new normal map on top of the waves. We use the alpha as we used before with the hate map and we then bring them back together. Same for the ambient occlusion, same for the roughness. So we also have liquid fall off roughness and liquid roughness, uh, separate settings. Then we have opacity and we also use, as you can see, the hate maps. And we combine and use it for our liquid color as well, for the opacity, along for them to work together and we, then we combine them in the base color. And that's in short. Here's the map, here's how it works, and probably there's a better way or a different way to make it work. If you have a better idea or maybe you can share something, let me know, write in the comments uh, or just uh, write me. I'll be very interested to improve this Vertex Master material.